Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The B-52 Strato Fortress, one of the oldest serving aircraft in the United States Air Force, has been the backbone of the U.S. Strategic Bomber Force for 70 years. The U.S. Air Force meticulously maintains the B-52 fleet at their state-of-the-art hangars as these bombers are slated to command skies until the 2050s. Unlike many of its contemporaries, the B-52 did not end up in a dusty graveyard. The higher payload capability, extended range, and ability to employ both nuclear and conventional standoff weapons allowed the bomber to serve a multitude of missions. However, to keep up with the demands of modern warfare, the bomber had to undergo continual upgrades. Till 2014, the B-52 pilots had to rely on vintage avionics with CRT displays and pressure gauges. Through the Combat Network Communications Technology, or Connect modification, the bomber leveled up with a digital cockpit carrying LCD screens, communication data links, and an integrated computing network. The bomber was initially equipped with Pratt & Whitney J57 turbojet engines, and starting from the B-52H model, the engine was upgraded with advanced Pratt & Whitney TF-33 turbofan engines. These engines are in use to this date and have contributed to the success of the B-52 Strato Fortress. Out of all the upgrades, the B-52 is getting ready for a new lease on life with the proposed new engine upgrade under the Commercial Engine Replacement Program. All 76 operational B-52H models will be upgraded to J models as new Rolls-Royce F-130 engines replace Cold War era TF-33 engines. Boeing as the manufacturer of the B-52, plays a key role in the engine replacement program. Besides new engines, during the model upgrade, the bomber will be retrofitted with an upgraded active electronically scanned array system radar as well. Boeing has set up a test facility at the Oklahoma City Air Logistics Complex in the Tinker Air Force Base to test the compatibility of the new engine with the existing airframes. The facility serves as a testing ground for the engineers as they get the opportunity to work with a real-world B-52 airframe. The Oklahoma City Air Logistics Complex is already undertaking depot-level maintenance and modifications on various aircraft and engines. The complex is home to nearly 9,500 employees that clock more than 4 million maintenance hours per year. Out of 64 facilities, there are anechoic chambers to test new radar systems in an electromagnetic interference-free environment, hush houses to test engines, and microanalysis equipment for metallurgical analysis. This facility could be a great asset for the B-52 during the engine replacement program and beyond. Moving the B-52 airframe from the Davis-Monthan Air Force Base to the testing facility was a task of its own. The airframe is nearly 160 feet long and requires a special truck for transportation. 
It traveled a total distance of over 1,500 miles, staying on the road for more than a month to reach the Oklahoma City Air Logistics Complex. The airframe was taken from a decommissioned bomber lying on the davis monthan Air Force Base Boneyard. While some aircraft continue to perform their intended roles for extended periods, some airframes encounter limitations. Thus, those aircraft are often repurposed. Similarly, a retired B-1B Lancer bomber was turned into a maintenance training asset by the U.S. Air Force to conduct training on battle damage repairs. Another interesting way of repurposing retired aircraft is using them as aerial targets for target practice. The retired aircraft is modified to fly autonomously. During the training, pilots get the opportunity to target a real-world aircraft as their enemy. This vastly improves the effectiveness and realism of the training. Fighters like the F-4 and F-16 are known for becoming aerial targets. Apart from honing pilot skills, these aerial targets are used to test new weapon systems as well. In most cases, a safety pilot mans the cockpit while the remote pilot flies the fighter from the ground. The orange colored fin and the wingtips signal the aircraft is a target. Some aircraft land on new rolls after retirement that seem more challenging than flying into a battle zone. One such example is the C-130 Hercules, which continues to serve as hurricane hunters after retirement. Being equipped with turboprop engines makes the C-130 ideal for flying in harsh weather, as turboprop engines are much more resistant to rainwater ingression and respond promptly to sudden throttle demands. These aircraft undergo heavy modifications to accommodate meteorological equipment within the cabin and to fix launch tubes to release drop sonts. The role played by hurricane hunters in gathering data and predicting the intensity and movement of hurricanes is another testament to the importance of repurposing and modification of aircraft. Another variant of the iconic C-130, the AC-130, has served the U.S. Air Force as a gunship, providing close air support, air interdiction, and armed reconnaissance. The C-130 comes with side-firing 40mm and 105mm cannons and a 25mm Gatling gun. The 105mm M102 howitzer is the largest gun found in any gunship. The AC-130U Spooky is the third generation of this gunship. The last aircraft of the U model retired in 2020 as the new J model undertakes the duties. The final AC-130U landed at the davis monthan Air Force Base and was honored with a water salute as a gesture of gratitude for its exceptional service. After the retirement, the aircraft was moved to the Hurlburt Field Air Park in Arizona to join the rest of the aircraft served under the Air Force Special Operations Command. 
The gunship landed at the Hurlburt Airfield, and the airmen removed its wings to smoothen the transportation process. Then the gunship was towed to its final resting place at the museum. The museum located within the Hurlburt Airfield is home to many exhibits related to the U.S. Air Force and Special Operations Command. These exhibits, especially the aircraft, testify to the technological prowess used by the U.S. military to utilize the available assets. When tracking through the lineage of modern gunships, the B-17 Flying Fortress holds staple significance due to its remarkable performance during the Second World War. More than 12,000 bombers have been manufactured, and this particular model dropped the highest number of bombs during the Second World War era. Due to its indispensable role, the bomber remains a cornerstone aircraft in aviation history. The B-17 was first flown in 1935, and the production lasted till 1945. Restoring an abandoned warbird is no easy task. However, a group of volunteers of the 512th Antique Restoration Group restored an abandoned B-17G bomber. The restoration work spanned across a decade, and in 1988, the fully operational aircraft flew from its restoration site at Dover Air Force Base, Delaware, to the National Museum of the United States Air Force in Dayton, Ohio. The Memphis Bell, an icon of American bravery and sacrifice, was also restored by the National Museum of the United States Air Force. Despite successful restoration, the bomber never flew, but is displayed as a static exhibit for the public. Memphis Bell played a key role in strategic bombing by destroying German war industrial sites. With four turbo-supercharged engines, the bomber had the ability to cruise at 35,000 feet and attain a maximum speed of 325 miles per hour. During the airframe restoration, the museum staff had to deal with extensive corrosion treatment to ensure the longevity of the airframe. The next mission was to find replacements for the missing parts. Sourcing replacement parts for this 1940s era aircraft was practically unfeasible. Thus, restoration specialists had to fabricate certain equipment, starting with the blueprints. During painting, the restoration specialists had to follow specific painting techniques to paint the bell. The entire painting process spanned across several months, and ultimately, the bomber got its authentic look. Installing the tail turret to the fuselage was challenging due to its larger size and heavy weight. As the tail turret is part of the aircraft's structure, it should be fitted to ensure the correct structural integrity. It has an aluminum sheathing to provide certain protection from enemy gunfire. The window cupola was made with plexiglass to offer better visibility for the tail gunner. A restored warbird is not just a symbol of pride and dedication, but a bridge that connects the past with the future. This enables future aviators to build upon their historical prowess. On the other hand, 
The repurposing initiatives put the airframes to good use by converting a soon-to-be piece of junk into a global asset. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.